Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining to the webcast today. My name is MD Wasiu Rahman. Uh, I'm from Intel, and I'll be presenting today my paper on uh, simplifying communication overlap in OpenHMEM through integrated user level thread scheduling. So this is a brief outline of our work. First, I would introduce this topic and uh, talk a little briefly about the motivation of this work. Uh, then I will talk uh, about uh, uh, some of the background details. Um, then uh, I'll go over uh, briefly the design and implementation that we have done. I'll talk uh, a little bit of the experimental uh, results that we have, and then I'll uh, conclude the presentation. So most of the high performance computing applications that uses uh, parallel programming models, uh, such as MPI or OpenHMEM, uh, they tend to uh, hide the communication lat latency and uh, to achieve uh, better execution uh, overlap of different phases. And uh, to achieve that, uh, most of the applications uh, today use uh, the uh, non-blocking communication APIs provided by these uh, programming models, or they try to uh, run the applications with multiple threads that also allow overlapping of different phases. In this table, I'm trying to show uh, the uh, differences of uh, uh, these two approaches. So first, uh, using non-blocking communication API uh, is right now supported by both MPI and OpenHMEM through their respective APIs. Uh, the benefit of non-blocking APIs is that uh, the performance is uh, really good because it uh, immediately returns to the caller, so there is no added overhead. However, it adds a programmer's responsibility to manage the asynchronous communication and to get the overlap. However, uh, the multi-threaded execution, which is also uh, supported by both MPI and OpenHMEM, uh, in terms of performance, it is not as good as non-blocking uh, communication APIs. And also it has uh, the disadvantage of uh, the context switching overhead, uh, uh, which actually increases uh, when a uh, number of threads also get increased. Uh, however, in terms of code complexity, it is uh, fairly simple, so it's just, uh, running the single threaded execution with multiple threads and distribute the workloads among the threads. So uh, observing these uh, behaviors, we try to evaluate in both of these approaches and try to see how, to in how they interact with each other. So here I'm showing uh, two different executions uh, of different uh, benchmarks. The left-hand side is showing an all-to-all -all, uh, execution time, uh, RPE, uh, for an integer sort benchmark that we have evaluated in one of our earlier work. And here we have evaluated uh, the blocking API execution and the non-blocking API execution. And for the non-blocking APIs, we have run also with multiple uh, OpenMP threads. In the right-hand side, we are measuring unidirectional food bandwidth uh, with a benchmark. And here we are evaluating it using with non-blocking APIs and blocking APIs. And for the blocking execution, we have tried it to run with multiple uh, OpenMP threads. And in both of these cases, what we have seen is that multi-threaded execution improves uh, performance uh, for both uh, blocking and non-blocking APIs. So when you use multi -th uh, multiple threads, uh, both the uh, APIs uh, actually execute uh, much better compared to single-threaded execution. However, we also observed that oversubscription of these threads also degrades the performance, uh, and that happens for both the APIs as well. So uh, we try to use user level threads, which is uh, to the to an uh, alternative to the waste threads. So the primary motivation of that uh, was to um, reduce the context switching overhead because uh, for user level threads, there is no waste involvement and uh, the thread maintenance and the uh, scheduling all happens in the user space. Uh, Linux uh, glibc provides the uh, uContext APIs, uh, which is basically a user level interface to provide uh, context uh, creation and switching. And here we have um, uh, done an experiment to uh, show the comparison of uContext uh, and pthread. And we have shown the comparison in terms of the switch, uh, context switch operation and the context create operation. And we can see that in both of these cases, uContext uh, performs much better compared to pthread. So from this observation, the problems that we uh, try to uh, solve in this work is, can OpenHMEM utilize this user level uh, cooperative thread scheduling uh, with an extension to the current standard? 
And while uh, solving this, we want to detect the appropriate thread to schedule to in, during the execution of, uh, of an application. Uh, also, we try to see, uh, would this solution uh, be productive enough to be used as a, an alternative to using the non-blocking APIs? So, uh, next I'm going to talk about a little bit of background of our work. So, OpenHPM has added the threading support uh, since 1.4. And uh, basically it has uh, four defined thread levels uh, similar to what MPI has. Uh, it provides a uh, trade-off between the number of PEs and the number of threads uh, that user can uh, use at, uh, on a given uh, node. Uh, also OpenHPM 1.4 introduced the context API that basically allows uh, the uh, using managing the communication resources efficiently from different threads. Um, Intel manages uh, the Sandia OpenHMEM uh, library, which is an OpenHMEM 1.4 compliant implementation. And it also uh, supports different HPC networks uh, through the OFI leaf fabric interfaces. As a prior work uh, for this uh, study, uh, we explored uh, different user level thread libraries that are available in the literature. And here are some of them listed here. Um, so the primary functionality of these user level thread libraries is, um, uh, is to provide uh, user friendly APIs, set of APIs that uh, um, provides the user flexibility to create and switch between these um, user level threads in the user space. Uh, it provides some yield and yield two mechanisms, which is basically um, uh, providing this uh, flexibility to the user. Uh, there has been uh, some work that uh, has been done uh, uh, utilizing these user level threads for parallel programming models such as MPI. Um, in terms of our work, we have uh, explored this uh, scope for OpenHPM runtime for the first time. And also we try to see whether there is a better scheduling policy or better scheduling algorithm that we can provide, which uh, basically works with this OpenHPM runtime efficiently. So now I'm going to talk about the design and implementation that we have uh, worked. Um, so I'm going to go over briefly uh, the design and implementation that we have done, but the details are in the paper. So I would uh, request the uh, viewers, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, look at the paper. So uh, I, I'm going to first give a high level execution overview. So uh, the left hand side is basically uh, presenting the existing design. So whenever an open HMM application has a blocking HMM put or get operation call, it uh, basically translated to a OFI read or write operation in, inside the open HMM library. And uh, after doing that operation, it is waiting for the update to the event counter, which is basically going to tell me that uh, the operation is complete. And after that, I can return back to the application. Um, so this is the ex existing design that we have. And what we are proposing is that when a blocking operation uh, is invoked, after doing the OFI read write, instead of waiting for the update of the event counter, we are going to read the counter once. And after that read, if we see that the operation is already complete, then I'm, we are going to uh, follow the existing route and return back to the caller. However, if we see that the operation is not complete, then we are going to yield to another thread at this point, just to make sure that the, because this thread is already blocked and it will remain, it will remain blocked for some time. So we let the other thread to move uh, forward and return to this thread at a later point. Um, to uh, give an architectural overview of how this uh, all fits in. So in this figure, we are trying to show what exactly we are proposing in terms of the new added uh, components in the OpenHPM library. So in the left hand side, you can see that the new added components are shown as the red um, uh, dashed line boxes. And uh, for the OpenHPM library, we are introducing this new thread scheduler component, which is basically uh, implementing a thread queue. The, this thread queue is uh, storing all the pending thread handles that the user uh, application is running. And also we are uh, introducing a set of APIs that is going to help us to um, uh, execute some thread library provided, uh, yield, uh, provided routines such as yield or yield two. So 
Uh, OpenHPM application can utilize both the OpenHPM and the threading library provided as schedulers. And when it does that, it is basically uh, utilizing either of these uh, um, scheduler policies that is, uh, um, that is uh, switching between these level threads. What OpenHPM library can do, so through our proposed APIs, we have a uh, way, uh, we have an API that actually uh, registers the yield routine that is provided by the thread library. And the user have to uh, register it before the, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the application. And after this uh, uh, routine is registered, the OpenHPM library can uh, call this routine to yield to another user level thread and uh, it can uh, make the switching um, by itself. So uh, it, it, can does the, it can do the switching uh, after, uh, through the yield or L2 routine provided by the thread scheduler, but how to know that which thread to schedule to. So for that, OpenHPM library al already has some um, information in, associated with the context. Uh, we call this software counters or event counters. And based on these counter values, the OpenHPM library knows which thread uh, it can select to, to yield to, to make the application uh, make forward progress. So I'm going to talk about a little bit of implementation in this uh, slide. So here I am showing uh, a little bit of implementation detail. Um, so the thread queue implementation is kind of a list uh, structure, which we are um, keeping in our implementation. And I'm trying to show how the thread yield policy works on this implementation. So uh, we have proposed a new policy, the communication aware thread scheduling policy. However, uh, we are not uh, utilizing this policy at, uh, from the very beginning of execution. So when the application starts uh, execution with, uh, uh, let's say, 10 threads, uh, we, uh, we wait until all the, thread, uh, all the 10 threads have started execution. So before uh, all the threads start execution, we just uh, uh, use the default uh, thread scheduler provided policy from the uh, thread, uh, thread library that is being used by the user. And uh, most of the cases that is round robin policy. So basically in a round robin manner, all the threads get started. And after all the threads get started, we uh, utilize the communication aware thread scheduling um, policy that we, have, uh, uh, that we have designed in this work. So uh, in, through the communication aware thread scheduling policy, we detect the next runnable thread that uh, we uh, choose uh, from uh, uh, looking at the performance counters, which uh, basically tells us that which thread is currently have all the uh, pending operations completed. So uh, in this thread queue, we store all this information and we uh, do a linear scan and we see that uh, some threads have already um, matched the issued operation and the completed operation. However, some threads are still waiting for the uh, completed operations to, uh, to be equal to the issued operation. So uh, based on, uh, which, based on the, these values, we decide which thread uh, can be selected as the next runnable thread. In addition to that, we also provide the user an option to mention a prioritized uh, configuration setting. Uh, user might want to um, put a priority to a particular operation compared to another one. So let's say user is running some application which has a put operation and an AMO operation, and user wants to prioritize the AMO to be completed first than uh, the put operation. So if a user uh, mentioned this type of configuration, then we um, prioritize that configuration first uh, to select the next runnable thread. And uh, uh, after that is met, then we uh, use the communication aware thread scheduling policy. So all this uh, uh, led us to propose uh, these eight APIs to the standards. So out of these eight APIs, the first one is the required API. So which basically um, uh, gives the OpenHPM library the flexibility to use the thread library provided yield mechanism, which is uh, the routine the application, uh, writer, application developer will provide. Um, so that is the required API that we need to enable OpenHPM uh, run with user level threads. The rest of the seven APIs is optional and basically these seven APIs provide an OpenHPM library to implement its own scheduling policy, such as uh, the one that we have proposed in this work is the communication aware scheduling policy. 
So uh, the first two APIs here is basically providing is a level thread info. The next two APIs is basically uh, uh, giving the user option to initialize and finalize the scheduler. And the last three APIs is uh, for querying and thread management uh, within the scheduler. Uh, next, I'm going to show um, example of punishment program with these proposed extensions. So uh, you can look at the right hand side, the main function. So uh, before uh, uh, starting the threads, uh, it uh, uh, calls those, uh, uses those uh, register APIs that we have proposed. And it registers the yield function, the get ELT info, which basically returns the thread ID, uh, Shepard ID, those things, and the get ELT handle, which returns the thread handle. After that, um, the uh, ELT scheduler initializes is called, which uh, initializes the OpenStream library scheduler. Then the thread create uh, is just uh, uh, similar to any multi-threaded uh, application and thread join. And then at the end, uh, before the shmem finalize, it calls the scheduler finalize. At the left hand side, we are showing uh, all the functions that is um, registered. So only uh, notable thing is the yield routine. You can see that we, how the user can implement the yield routine. So in this uh, yield routine, we are basically employing both of the uh, scheduling policies. So if we see all the threads have already started, then we uh, choose the open HMM thread scheduler policy and we get the next runnable thread from, uh, from this API that we have proposed. However, if all the threads have not yet started, then we choose the default policy through the uh, thread library scheduler, uh, thread library provided. So with this um, APIs and our design and implementation, we um, believe that we can simplify the operation overlap that the application programmer uh, wants to get from uh, the application that he is running. So we are we would, uh, here we would uh, try, uh, try to give an example of how it is uh, being done. So the example that we are choosing here is an integer sort benchmark. And integer sort benchmark has a, uh, it's a bucket uh, sort algorithm where at the end of the bucket, uh, um, uh, uh, and there's the bucket creation and the uh, uh, data filling, it does a key exchange um, among all the pieces. And this key exchange is basically an all to all operation and uh, it employs a fetch add operation first uh, to get the remote uh, destination offset index. Um, uh, this is a, a atomic operation uh, to make sure that uh, all the pieces are not writing in the same place. And then a put operation, which basically writes the data to that index. So this uh, code snippet is basically showing the key exchange routine um, in the default uh, in the in the application uh, of integer sort, and you can see that this employs just a single loop with uh, one atomic operation of uh, fetch add and then uh, uh, RMA operation of put. Now we are going to show um, two examples uh, from the, derived from this uh, uh, key exchange. One is uh, uh, just uh, implementing this key exchange with non-blocking APIs. And the other one is implementing this key exchange uh, function with blocking APIs, but using multiple user level threads. So here are those examples. So left-hand side is showing the same uh, key exchange routine with non-blocking APIs. And the right-hand side is showing the same key exchange with blocking APIs, but with multiple threads. And you can see the non-blocking API execution uh, from that single loop has divided the work into three uh, for loops. And you can see that the, each, uh, the first for loop is just uh, assigning uh, default value to the destination offset that we are going to collect in a non-blocking API. Um, and the, in the second loop, we are uh, invoking the non-blocking fetching AMO. And in the third loop, we are invoking uh, the non-blocking uh, put uh, RMA. And before that put RMA, we have to wait for each of the operation uh, of the previous uh, loop to be complete. And uh, just uh, this example actually shows that just to achieve uh, operation overlapping, we have to write this uh, example application in this manner uh, when we are using the non-blocking uh, communication APIs. And it achieves good performance, uh, which we have shown in the paper, um, but we are skipping that here. However, uh, if you look at the right hand side, uh, utilizing blocking APIs with multiple threads is very much similar compared to what uh, by default we have. 
So it is the same uh, single for loop with uh, both of those um, um, APIs uh, being invoked in the in the for loop. The only um, new addition is that we have added the thread um, and we have um, distributed the load among the thread and we have used a, a separate context for each thread uh, so that we can manage the resources efficiently. So this basically shows that uh, simplifying the operation overlap through multiple uh, threads is uh, much more easier compared to utilizing the non-blocking API. However, uh, uh, we would, uh, we would uh, now show that uh, whether we can achieve uh, a comparable performance as well. So I'm going to go over the experimental analysis next. Uh, so this is the setup that we have used. Uh, uh, we have used eight compute nodes in an Intel cluster. Um, this is an Skylake, uh, uh, the CPUs are Skylake machines and uh, with uh, 26 cores per node and two threads per core at uh, 2.1 gigahertz. Um, uh, we have used uh, all these configurations, uh, which I'm not going to go over. Um, how, uh, for software, we have used the Sandia OpenHMIM uh, v1.4.4, and the Leaf Fabric we have used 1.7 with the PSM2 provider. For the user level thread library, we have used ArgoBots. Um, for benchmarks and applications, we have used synthetic micro benchmarks. Uh, we have used Mandelbrot and integer sort benchmark. And also we have used the Smith Waterman implementation uh, from Oak Ridge Benchmark Suite. So I'm going to go over only two of the results today. So first of all, uh, I'd uh, like to present um, the performance of different scheduler policies. So as I have said in the design section that we employ two scheduler um, uh, policy during the execution of the application. At the initially when threads are uh, still uh, starting, we use the round robin and then we use the communication aware thread scheduling. So here we are sh um, showing uh, performance differences uh, using uh, different uh, scheduler policies for those two uh, execution times. And you can see that uh, the random means uh, we are using random uh, policy throughout the execution. Round robin is similar. Round robin uh, plus random means uh, we are using round robin uh, since uh, the thread has not been started. And after that we use random. And uh, round robin plus communication aware means that we are using the round robin initially and then communication aware, which is basically our, our uh, proposed solution. And we have evaluated these uh, policies in two uh, environments. One is the balanced load and one is unbalanced. Um, by balanced, we mean that all the threads are basically doing the same thing. Um, there is no difference uh, um, in terms of what the thread is executing. Unbalanced means some threads are doing a different uh, type of execution. And our communication aware thread scheduling will actually uh, be more efficient in that case because it can detect that uh, which thread is executing um, more work and it, it actually switches to those threads more. So here we are showing that uh, for balanced load, we are almost performing similar to uh, round robin for small message sizes. For larger message sizes, we perform better. And for unbalanced load, we are observing much higher benefit. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, our implementation with the Smith Waterman algorithm. So we implement, uh, we take this implementation from OSB and we have implemented the user level thread uh, on top of it. We executed this with eight user level threads per PE and uh, we measured these four different configurations. So the default is the default implementation and uh, the default with prefetching enabled and non-blocking uh, API is basically the best case for default. Uh, implementation, implementation with user level threads is our implementation um, without any other advantage. And the last one is uh, our user level threaded implementation and also uh, adding the non-blocking API. And here you can see that um, if you look closely, the, um, the light blue and the yellow bars, they are very close uh, in terms of performance. And you can see that uh, these are basically uh, the default non-blocking performance with prefetching and uh, in uh, comparison to user level threaded execution and they are almost neck and neck. However, if we use non-blocking APIs with user level threads, the performance becomes much better. So here you can show that the user level thread actually improves the performance by almost 28% for this um, sequence alignment benchmark. So, um, I'll conclude now. Uh, so in this work, we have explored the usage of user level threads for OpenHMIM applications. 
we have tried to uh, show that comparable performance can uh, be achieved uh, by using these level threads. And it also provides the ease of programming to e achieve the communication overlap. Um, as a future work, we would try to see that whether the scheduler design can be improved and also we try to see whether uh, we can investigate with other thread uh, libraries that is there in the literature. Thank you. Um, this is my main address. Uh, please uh, uh, send me questions if you have any.